So with that, I'm going to introduce you to one of them, Unidesk. Tom, welcome, and uh, please come and join us and share with us how Unidesk has cracked the code and done some of the early guerrilla marketing. Great. By the way, That's I did not favorite. do this to Tom. Yeah, he, he didn't kick me. I'll get up here as fast as my torn meniscus will allow me to. <coughs> yeah, Nike wearing Nikes when I did this, yes. Um, so Michael asked me to share some uh, concrete uh, examples of guerrilla marketing. I'm probably a good choice because uh, Unidesk is my fifth startup. So like you, I'm used to having very limited budget to uh, engage in marketing. Um, so uh, let's get started and see if that works. So, so your goal should be really to spend, you know, as, as Michael said, you don't want to be wasting VC money, Michael's money in, in my case, on uh, testing what works. Guerrilla marketing is a great way to experiment and if you're measuring, to refine your strategy without spending a lot of money. So whether you're selling desktop virtualization software like Unidesk is or something else, um, some of these examples I'm going to show you can really be applied to whatever business you're starting. And as I look back, uh, Unidesk is almost four years old now and we've really applied guerrilla marketing and uh, in social media and web marketing since the uh, inception of the company. So back uh, about four years ago, we didn't have a product. We, uh, we, had, you know, we had an idea from our founder. So uh, we were at the requirements phase. And so our goal really was to make sure we built the right product. So how do you get feedback from the market to ensure you're going to build the right product? Well, we came up with the idea to use uh, surveys. And uh, you know, we talked a bit about brand. We had uh, our CTO and founder, Chris Mindley, um, you know, innovation, uh, well known for innovation. We kind of try to capture his essence in the emails that we sent out to the, the, the low cost list that we acquired. And basically we said, look, uh, I'm Chris Midgley, I have nothing to sell you. I'm just looking to get your ideas on how to refine an idea I have to make desktop management uh, you know, really transform the way, the way desktops are managed. And all I want to do is you know, get, get some of your thoughts and ideas. And it was amazing that just coming up front with that and saying I've got no product to sell, we got about 75 responses and we had open form questions where people were writing you know, almost books, you know, pages and pages of their challenges around desktops and sharing what they wanted to see in an innovative technology. So we used something, a low cost, SurveyMonkey, uh, it's still out there today, other sur online survey tools. We leverage our founder's appeal to kind of get that feedback and really understand what the right product was to build. So that was in our requirements phase. Um, next was pre-launch. So it took us a while to build the product, actually longer than we had anticipated. Um, the good news was we didn't uh, wait to start blogging and start building our, our, our long tail, our, our search engine uh, optimization, our keywords, until we had launched. We actually started about a year and a half before we had product. And I can't emphasize that enough. If you've got a compelling personality, uh, if you've got um, good content, you've got people who like to write, start that right away. Get people coming to your site, share insight, you know, be compelling. You'll get people coming that'll help build your database. It helps create link twos. It helps you optimize your search. Uh, for search engine optimization, uh, you'll have the right terms, you'll be drawing people inbound even before you've got product. And that's really what happened with the Unidesk. We had a lot of uh, inbound activity even before we had product, which made it much easier for us to get beta customers when we finally did have product. Uh, and really all these also map to the stages of the selling process uh, that Michael's already talked about as well. So you see our awareness is the stage we're at now. Next is launch. So we finally had product. Uh, how do you launch it? In the old days, um, you know, uh, you hired a PR firm and you did, the, did the, the tour of the press. The press is gone. There is no press anymore. You're the media. Your blog, you can write whatever you want. You've become the new media. And also the influential bloggers that cover your space, they are the new media. So you've got to identify them early and reach out to them. And that's what we did. Uh, we actually reached out to uh, the key blogger in the desktop virtualization space. We gave, gave him an exclusive uh, and let him unveil us. And as a result, he, he talked quite a bit about us uh, in those early days. Uh, of course, you have to have, as Michael said before, a unique differentiated position. You've got to have a compelling uh, brand and idea. So that's how we kind of launched ourselves was, through, uh, was through, um, through attacking the bloggers. Now we're in the building pipeline phase. So what kind of guerrilla marketing, and by the way, these are all, you know, all zero cost, very, very low cost. It doesn't cost really anything other than your time to do these kinds of things. Uh, so next was, uh, how do we build pipeline? How do we educate prospects that Unidesk has something that's very, very different than anything else that's on the market? And so what we did was we have, um, you know, again, video editing software. We built videos. Uh, our product demos very nicely. It's almost Apple-esque in the way it looks and feels to the end user. So we leveraged that by taking videos as much as we could and having uh, Chris, who you see there on the bottom left, 
uh, our chief solution, solution architect, another compelling personality, get up and talk about Unidesk and show the product. And we landed those on YouTube, we put them on LinkedIn, we tweeted, we blogged, we put them everywhere. And again, that drove more inbound uh, uh, traffic to our site and really helped with understanding how Unidesk was new and different uh, in the market. You've got to have strong evangelists and you've got to have crisp scripts. You can't get on there and do 35 minute videos. You've got to be crisp. We had two minute shorts, we had four or five minute longer versions. Our longest, really, our longest version is about 15 minutes and that's got to be the end. So now we're in the customer acquisition phase. Uh, again, still trying to focus on being low cost. And um, th the cool thing that, about Unidesk is that we have very passionate customers who want to tell their story about their success. And Michael already talked about how, how, how important it is to establish a beachhead, get references, and then have those references tell each other about it. Well, what better way to do that than through webinars where they can get on and broadcast that message to 400 people at a time. And so that's what we've done, especially in the last year. We run webinars every three to four weeks featuring our customers. They're the stars. We get up there and do a very small product pitch or small demo, but we let them tell their story. And we focus it on verticals. We just did one today on healthcare, and really it was mostly hospitals and, and, uh, and clinicians and practices that, that came on board. So again, if you have passionate customers, you want to get other customers to engage and go to trial with your product, uh, webinars are a very low cost way to, to drive that. Uh, you're only paying for a GoToMeeting or a WebEx subscription, fairly low cost, and you're, spe you're spending on vertical response or constant contact or new tools like Acton to do the email marketing. Again, they're all on demand, they're pretty low cost uh, ways of doing this. And the cost per lead becomes very, very low. And then the last phase is when you're in production, you've got production customers, how do you get more sales? How do you get repeat sales of the customers you've already sold to? And so, um, uh, like uh, the example that Michael just showed of Acquia uh, with Semantic, we've also just gone live with our forums. Uh, Unidesk is based all on Drupal, uh, the, uh, the platform by Acquia, and um, as part of that, one of those plugins is a, is, is a forum. So our customers can search our website, our blog, our knowledge base, our support, our forums, and the website content itself, and it, our search engine goes across all those things because we've, we've standardized that on that platform. And now with our forums, we're giving, we're pretty much opening them up to anybody that wants to come on, and they can see the customer dialogue that's happening with Unidesk. We put it online, what, about a week ago? We already have 215 posts with you know, almost 100 replies on some of these things. So they see how dynamic our community is. It gives the customers confidence that, gee, if I go with Unidesk, I'm gonna be part of this growing community. So again, um, all that requires is, you've already got the platform, you got to have active customers who are gonna participate in that, uh, you've gotta moderate the form yourself, so it's, again, it's, it's more of your time. And, uh, and then at the end of this all is measure everything. Everything you do, you gotta refine it, you gotta measure it. So we've got spreadsheets, we track everything we do to refine that funnel and, and make sure that you know, we're, as we're experimenting, we're, we're always improving uh, our, our processes. Thank you very much, great example. In many ways, uh, Unidesk has been a great model of this because they've been extraordinarily effective. They're probably one of the very right few one. companies that has always right underspent one. overall versus their original plan. And I think it's in large part to the way in which the team has been so clear about from day one how they would manage and measure everything in their marketing. So congrats to you guys.